Okay, so today we're starting on the urinary system. Um, it's one of the excretory systems. We're not going to, I know in the, in the workbook, the next thing is the nervous system, but it doesn't make sense to go to the nervous system after respiration. Is respiration is still excretion, kind of. It's like excretion of, of wastes. And so is the urinary system. It's a big thing on excretion of waste. It's not a huge, it's complicated, but it's not a lot. Today we're just going to touch, we're going to start on it. We're going to do the meat of it tomorrow. So uh, this is how we're doing this. Uh, our bodies produce waste, right? So uh, know what wastes we produce. When we're doing cellular respiration... So we breathe in oxygen. We learned all about that. The oxygen goes through capillaries. It goes, goes through all that stuff. Goes into the tissues. Goes into the cells. The cells suck up that oxygen, and they do cellular respiration. Um, that's magic in the mitochondria. Chemical electron magic in the mitochondria, uh, and they convert. Uh, it's a Krebs cycle, and they turn that oxygen into carbon dioxide and water and ATP. And our bodies use the ATP. It's not really a waste. They use the ATP, but they don't want the carbon dioxide. And the water we can use too, but a lot of the water actually gets breathed out because that's what happens to the carbon dioxide. Remember, it goes out and it gets breathed out. So that's what happens to those wastes. Uh, because it, go, you know, it goes into the, into, into the alveoli and we learned about how all of that happens. Uh, but there's more wastes that are made. So cells also, when they're breaking down uh, amino acids, so when you eat proteins and you're breaking down amino acids and you use those pieces of the amino acids, you, you, you can use them for energy. You can, uh, you can use them to build proteins and, and uh, enzymes, right? Proteins and enzymes are made of amino acids. But you can, we, when we eat stuff, we use those amino acids because we don't make some of the amino acids. We use them to make new proteins and enzymes. It's important. Uh, so, but the, there's a byproduct of breaking those amino acids down, and that's ammonia, which formula is NH3. And ammonia is toxic. Buildup of ammonia is toxic. So it's quite toxic, actually. Uh, if you've ever smelt Windex, window cleaner, you've ever helped around the house, you, you millennial kid, you're not even millennial kids. I don't know what you are. You should be helping around the house. Anyways you will smell uh, ammonia. That's the smell of ammonia and it's toxic, right? It breaks stuff down, it cleans windows. Well, you don't want that inside your body. So what happens is that ammonia then travels to your liver. Remember the liver, that big, important, huge organ made bilirubin, biliverdin, and it makes, uh, you know, it had all those things, all those functions. Well, one of those functions is <coughs> that it converts ammonia, excuse me, <clears throat> into urea. Urea is still toxic, but a little bit less toxic. So it's good. It's gooder. Uh, and so then it makes it into urea. And you are all familiar with urea because you've, ureaed, uh, you've urinated out. And the main component of urine is urea. And so you pee out the urea. So it travels from the liver then into the kidneys. And we're going to learn about what happens there uh, tomorrow. Uh, the next thing is we also break down nucleic acids. Remember, there's, a, there's all the, which enzyme, anybody remember which enzyme in digestion breaks down the nucleic acid? It was something nuclease, something nuclease. That's, that's as far as uh, this morning I remember. Uh, uh, and so the purines in nucleic acids, that's in the bases, they make uric acid. Uh, and obviously, you don't want uric acid inside of you. That sounds gross. That doesn't sound like fun. So the uric acid is also excreted, and that goes out in the kidneys as well. So we're going to be learning about those processes, those kidneys, is getting rid of those wastes. Both uric acid and ammonia are really toxic. So your kidneys working well is very important. Um, if they don't work well, you don't filter out those toxins out of your blood and they will wreak havoc on you. People who have kidney disease have huge problems. Mr. K in trouble because of his high blood pressure on the uh, 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 warning list, risk list for kidney disease with high blood pressure. Low, keep your blood pressure low. 
Uh, okay, so what happens? So what? Let's to look at the kidneys. Okay, here it is. It's yucky. It's gross. It smells like pee. It's the kidney. So this is what it looks like in real life. This is what a kidney looks like. Uh, you can see it's it's they're actually fairly small. Uh, if we go over, do we have time? Let's see. This video might be might be long. You can you guys are probably already turning it off already. If you've lasted this long, good on you. Uh, let's go over. I just, you know, these aren't well produced. We don't have a lot of budget for this, and I'm just making it up as I go. Uh, here we go. So here's our guy. Uh, and so we've done all of these things. Look, we did the lungs. Let's rip out his lungs. Let's rip out his heart. You guys ever see that movie, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom? You should see it. It's, it's pretty good. And all the way back here, sir. Oh! There it is, is the kidneys. So let's pull out his guts. Oh, there's a kidney fell out, and there's another kidney. Okay, they're at the back, in behind all the guts. And uh, this kidney has been cut away conveniently for us, so we can actually look at the anatomy of this kidney and, and, um, and talk about it as we, as we go. So what happens here is there's sort of two... There's two systems going on. So this is the kidney. There you go. And as you, if you zoom in on the kidney, if you zoom in on this region here, you will see this, this is the working bit of the kidney. This is called a nephron. And it, there, there's tons and millions and millions, and lots and lots and lots of nephrons all in here. And as you can see, what is happening in the nephron, there's a, a tube, this is called a lumen of the nephron, okay? That's where the pee is collected. And you can see it's all surrounded by blood vessels. And so things go in and out, in and out, and into the pee, and then out they go, uh, and you pee them out. So we are, so there's the path of the blood, and then there's the path of the urine. That is basically the things that we need to learn. So here's a large, so let's start with first, once urine is created, what happens? So what happens when urine is created, so it's created in these kidneys, and it's created in this section here. So this is called the cortex, and then more inside, a little bit inside, is the medulla. You can see it really well on this really disgusting version picture here. So the cortex is this sort of area all the way around and the medulla is is kind of in here and then this is called the renal pelvis and that's where the urine collects that's where it starts its life and it goes down the ureter so it goes down the ureter the pee goes down and this is actually has peristalsis in it it actually pushes the urine down uh, which means that you can pee upside down and it goes, then your urine goes into the bladder. This stretches. It's got rugae, kind of. I don't know it, what they're called, but, you know, it's all just like the stomach had all those folds inside, so it can stretch out. I looked up, what is it? Five cups of urine. Five cups. Take five cups. That's like a big gulp. I don't know. It's a huge amount. That's more than this. Five cups of urine is how much it can hold. That's an average number, which means some people can do more, like 10 cups maybe? I don't know. Sometimes when I pee in the morning, it's a lot of urine. Too much information. You know what, don't, don't watch that bit. I, I don't have time to edit it out. Uh, and, and then some people have less. As you get older, your urine not so good, your, or your bladder not so good at holding urine. You pee more often. When you enter your 40s, you, you pee a lot. Okay, I'll tell you that. Uh, and there's a whole bunch of reasons for that. But anyways, okay, so, uh, and then it goes down the urethra. So for men, the urethra is through the penis. And for women, uh, it's not through the penis. It goes out the vagina. And uh, you are done. You have peed your penis. Your penis. Your pee is gone. Your urine is gone. So that's the path of the urine. Now, what happens? How does that urine get made? We're going to go in detail tomorrow, but... There's all these blood vessels. So we have the renal artery. That's how it starts. So let's see if we can see a larger version of the renal artery, a better version. So the renal artery, that's this red one. 
So the renal artery, it goes in, and you see these are called the uh, renal pyramids, these sort of shapes, and they're in the medulla. So the medulla is that inner section, and then the outer section is the cortex. So, and the, the renal arteries go in, and then they split off into something called arterioles, okay? They're called afferent arterioles. So the renal artery splits off to these afferent arterioles, and there are going to be tons of these afferent arterioles. So blood is going in, it goes through the afferent arterial, and then the afferent arterial has this special structure here. It's basically a whole, it's like a clump of capillaries, and the blood shoots in here under pressure, and as it shoots in here, these capillaries have, have a semi-permeable membrane, and so stuff can come out. Not big proteins, but small things come out. Water and stuff come out of these capillaries, come shooting out. This is just like the capillaries. Remember the blood pressure pushing stuff out in the lungs and pushing stuff out in the tissues. So the same kind of thing is happening here. These are very permeable capillaries and the same sort of thing is going on here. And so filtration starts here. It's going into, we're going to talk about this bit in a little second, what that thing is. And then the blood travels into something called the efferent arteriole. And we distinguish that arteriole because it has special powers. It can open and close. Uh, I think it's thanks to hormones. So we're going to learn there's going to be a whole hormone thing that we have to talk about. The ADH, dehydrated, D something hormone. Anyways, we're, it's, it's coming. It's coming. That'll probably be the third day. And then it can it can control the pressure here. If blood pressure drops, oops, no, I don't want that to do that. Just cancel that. Uh, if blood pressure drops, it uh, it will open or constrict either or. We're going to learn about that. Mr. K hasn't hasn't read that far ahead yet. You remember, I'm only a few minutes ahead of you. Uh, and then, even though I've taught this many times, actually, I taught this a few times now. Uh, and then it goes into the peritubular capillaries, and so these surround the nephron, all the little bits of the nephron, and things go in and out. They sort of diffuse. So there's going to be some diffusion here and active transport and stuff going on. Remember that diffusion stuff I said, it's important. Uh, and then finally, this blood now is cleaned. The water has been put back and all this sort of, everything's been returned. It's in a good state now. And no, none of those... Um, uh, nitrogenous waste, which is what uric acid and urea are. None of those nitrogenous wastes are in it now, and out it goes, out the uh, out the renal vein. That's what we really need to worry about. Don't worry, interlobular vein. Yeah, we can know that word, but renal vein is the important one. So out it goes in the renal vein. So, uh, you know, a question on a quiz would be like, what would, what's in the blood in the renal artery? What's in the blood in the renal vein? And, you know, you, you learn what filtered blood looks like, and we're going to learn about that. Okay, so you have to know that the renal vein is, is, is clean blood leaving, the renal artery is dirty blood coming in. Okay, so now what's the path here of urine being made? So here is the nephron with the, all those capillaries taken away. So the nephron starts with something called the renal corpuscle, okay? And, uh, or the, the Bowman's capsule. It's also known as the Bowman's capsule. I don't know. It's like a fishing, like a fishing thing. It sounds like a boating thing. Bowman's capsule. Arr. Anyways, uh, so these capillaries have filter out. Stuff goes in, uh, and it starts first in something called the proximal convoluted tubule. And here, uh, what happens is reabsorption. So stuff has shot out of here and some good things have gone into the urine that we don't want under pressure and now the proximal convoluted tubule the blood vessels that are around it where are they the blood vessels that are around it now reabsorb this is selective reabsorption happens here we're going to talk about more about it tomorrow really specifically what gets reabsorbed uh then there's the loop of Henle, and here kind of water and stuff get uh, taken out. This, you'll notice, is in the medulla. So this is the cortex, so that's this section, and then this dips all the way down. It's a lot longer, I believe, than, than what it is on this, actually on this diagram. It dips down into the medulla. And what happens is there's sort of diffusion events here that happen. We're going to learn about those, and water and stuff... Um, uh, get put, water is recovered and 
uh, that kind of thing. And then up we go into the distal convoluted tubule. So we're back in the cortex and now we've got more water or less water. Uh, and here, um, hydrogen ions are put back or not. So the pH of the blood, there's a lot of controlling the pH of the blood here in the distal convoluted tubule. And then finally, we have the collecting duct. Duct. So now this is nice urine, yummy urine. It goes into the collecting duct. Here, more water is either reabsorbed or it, it controls how much water is reabsorbed, basically. So either water is not reabsorbed. So if you drink alcohol, it actually blocks the reabsorption of water here. So that's why you pee a lot if you're drinking uh, beer. You guys, of course, don't drink beer because you're, you're young. But al alcohol blocks that. So uh, you pee, that's why you pee more. It blocks the reabsorption here of water, or you reabsorb a lot of water here, and your pee will be really yellow. Uh, and then it goes down the collecting duct. It's now pee, and it collects here in the renal pelvis, and then down the ureter, and like we talked about, to the bladder, and then out the, um, the urethra. Okay, so that's a general overview of anatomy of um, of uh, the urinary system. So um, this thing is called the nephron. It's the working unit of the of the kidneys or what that's what it's called the working section of the kidneys. This does all the work. So that we're going to be learning about all the exchange that happens here. So just become familiar with that. The important things are this glomerul glomerulus glomerulus those those arteries that I mentioned. And, and veins, uh, the renal corpuscle or the Bowman's capsule, uh, the proximal convoluted tubule, distal convoluted tubule, this descending loop and ascending loop. So we're gonna learn all the specific things that happen in there. But so now you're, you're starting to become familiar with what, the, what this thing is. And so, yeah, all in here. Is, so this has got, got a lot of arteries and a lot, a lot of those veins and all those, um, those nephrons are going down into here. So the, the Bowman's capsules are going to be all up here and the loop of Henley's are going to be all down. Bowman's capsules on the outside, loop of Henley's uh, going down. Okay, uh, there you go. Your first lesson on, on, uh, <laughs> on uh, the urinary system. I'll see you tomorrow.